Hey guys, it's Daniel. The following is a quote from photographer Alice Wheeler, where she discusses the history of Nirvana's first ever photo shoot in 1988. Later in this video, I'm going to show you a clip from my interview with Alice Wheeler. I interviewed Alice Wheeler for my documentary, Rock is Dead. If you want to see the full documentary, it's linked below. The photo shoot took place near the Tacoma's Narrow Bridge at a park called Never Never Land. Quote, It was like this little fantasy storybook land. There were all these weird characters, little elves under the trees, Humpty Dumpty, some other stuff. We went all over. We went into the woods, and I shot infrared, and then we went by the bridge. It took a few hours. It was a very lengthy photo shoot, and they were very cooperative. Chad had a germs t-shirt on, and I just thought it was so weird that they were wearing other people's shirts. I couldn't understand why he would be wearing somebody else's shirt for a photo shoot of their band. Oh yeah, I was pushing them around. <laughs> Look at how many little poses I made him do. We were just having fun. I was nervous, of course. It was my first photo shoot. So I threw in every trick I had in the book, and I shot as much film as I possibly could. It was my first paying gig. I got paid 25 bucks. What was really interesting was when I first shot them for the first probably 10 to 15 years, everybody told me what horrible photos they were. And now, ironically enough, they've become genius level. Kurt and I, we always just liked each other. We connected. So even if we hadn't seen each other for a while, we could just sit down and have a very long, heavy conversation. He knew a lot about music but he was hungry and trying to find out everything. And I was a little bit older, like five years older than he was or something. So I was just older enough that he would ask me all kinds of questions. Plus, I lived in LA already, and I'd been in the punk scene when it was really happening from 79 to 90. And he was really curious about that, end quote. This was at Motorsports Garage, which was like a big show. The first show when they did, when all these photographers came from England, right when grunge broke in England. And um, this was at the Hub Ballroom, um, which was at the University of Washington. Um, and that was before they got famous. It was the same day as the other photos for Bleach. I met Kurt through Tracy Miranda, his first girlfriend in Olympia. And Tracy and I were friends when I moved to Olympia and I was going to the Evergreen State College in, in Olympia, Washington. And um, I used to hang out with Tracy before she started dating Kurt. She lived at a punk rock house called the Alamo on the east side of Olympia with some other people that I knew that were in the band Danger Mouse. And, um, you know, it was a pretty low key scene. We'd go see music all the time. We'd drive up to Seattle to see music just for the night. The traffic wasn't that bad yet. You could go from here to there, no problem, just for the night. And Tracy was from Tacoma, so we'd go to Tacoma a lot. And at that time, Tracy had started dating Kurt. He was from Aberdeen, so I heard about him through her. Um, but I never met him because, you know, Aberdeen is the opposite way from Seattle. <laughs> and um, none of us had a lot of money or gas to go anywhere. Um, Tracy worked at night at the Boeing cafeteria, and so she would drive to Aberdeen a lot and hang out with him. And um, then eventually I met him and uh, my friend Bruce Tavitt started Sub Pop Records. He also had gone to Evergreen State College, um, I think a couple years before I did. Um, and when I was in college there, we had a student club called Gasco. And um, it was, um, we got a lot of um, greeners, like, um, they call them greeners, the people Evergreen. that went to Evergreen. Yeah, yeah greeners. <laughs> um, uh, Bruce Pavitt used to come down and DJ and so we'd all dance and um i think it was before nirvana got formed it was right around the time nirvana got formed um the melvins used to be our house band there really so yeah kurt was um you know good buddies with those guys because they were from montesano the town over yeah. from aberdeen and so like everybody knew each other so about the time i moved back to seattle and i started doing photography trying to do photography professionally after i got out of college um, the first person that hired me was Bruce Pavitt from Sub Pop Records to do the original Nirvana single, Big Cheese. And it was for their singles club, though, you know, the, I think they only released, I think, a thousand copies of each one. And um, so the first time I actually met Kurt was um, Chris Novoselic and Tracy and Bruce Pavitt came by my apartment in Belltown and picked me up. And, oh, and Kurt was there and um, Chad Channing was the drummer and he lived on Bainbridge Island um, and uh, then we drove down to uh, Tacoma and took photos at the Tacoma Narrow Bridge Narrows Bridge and that was the cover of um, Big Cheese like the front cover is shot at Never Never Land which was near the Tacoma Narrows Bridge in the park there 
and um, the back cover is shot where the new bridge is. They built a second bridge, so now there's a double bridge, and right where we were standing when we took the photos was right where the new bridge is. Because <laughs> there used to be a park there before they built the new bridge. So anyways, that was the first day I met Kurt. We were friends. We had a lot in common. Like, he was pretty sensitive. I was like sensitive guys. He was my friend's boyfriend. So I was never interested in him in anything but just being friends. Um, what was great about that scene were all the guys and girls, like, hung out together and were equal. And there was a lot of ideas going back and forth because a lot of us were in college and the kids that weren't in college were all talking about the same ideas that the kids were studying in college. Like, we studied the meaning of life. And um, a lot of people that were friends with Kurt were also in that class, like Slim Moon from Kill Rock Stars Records. And um, uh, a bunch of other people that are mentioned in some of the Nirvana songs. One time when I ran into him when he was famous, he was telling me about the video that they made for In Bloom and how they got the old um, film footage left over from the 60s and they got the same camera that they used to film the Ed Sullivan show and they had like all these details like they were all working in his mind like he was creating this image he had this idea about what he wanted to do and it was really fantastic you know that's why I liked him was because like every time we would hang out we would sit down and have these big conversations about ideas and different things easily amused I think yeah. that was about what I was telling Kurt because my mom used to have me um, just take care of myself because she was an artist, so she'd be like, here's a sketch pad and some pencils, just take care of yourself, you know, like, so I was always like, I've always been easily amused, like, I can go anywhere and just sit around and enjoy looking at things, and like, that was the conversation, and I think that's where that phrase, easily amused, came from, and, that's cool. you know, so it's taken me years to sort of remember and figure that out, but um, I think all the Nirvana songs are like that. There's like little pieces about like different things that happen. And so a lot of them are about like they're all from his journals that were written when he lived in Olympia and he was in the middle of that creative milieu. And the beauty of what happened in the Northwest was we were isolated. So, you know, if everyone would have been trying to get a record label in Los Angeles uh, when they were first starting out, maybe they would have been more homogenous. But here, everybody got to do their own thing because it was a punk rock standard. So we were basing all our stuff off of, like, punk rock from, like, 10 years before, like, in the 70s. Like, what was going on in England, what was going on in New York, what was going on in L.A., you know. And so there were always influences in Seattle because of that. 